Hey y'all. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Patrice. Please look around if you enjoy that content. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and also make sure to hit that subscribe button for my returning subscribers. Hey y'all, welcome back. So the summer has swiftly come and gone and now it is time for me to return back to work and my daughter to return back to school in person. So I will be in person also and welcoming more students who will be there with me. So I really, really, really needed something to boost my spirits up. And what better way to boost my spirits than to open up my Cricut Maker and make all the things. So I do want to give a shout out to Cricut for partnering with me in this video to show y'all a few of the items that I will be making for the next school year. Now these are only a few items. I will be making tons more and I'm sure I'll have more videos so that y'all know what I will be doing. In addition, I do plan on decorating my new class. Most of y'all know that I have moved from one class or one position to another position and I am going to have to decorate I need new decorations now so you guys will be seeing more of that but i just want to show you i am well i have made me a new teacher bag so this will hold all my lesson plans and everything that i need throughout the day it will hold my snacks so yeah i made this with some cricut infusible ink i'm going to show you guys how i made this also i made some cute pencil pouches for my students so that they can have individual pencil pouches at their stations or at their desk or whatever they're working on so that they don't have to share. I know we are still going to be practicing some sort of distancing, so I need to make sure they're prepared. For my daughter, I made her this cute notebook and I use some Cricut Everyday Iron On Vinyl and I placed this onto this faux leather journal and it turned out really, really cute. She is a teen, so I had to make sure her stuff didn't look, you know, it needs to look age appropriate in order for her to wear it or use it. I also made her a personalized water bottle because they will not be able to get up and go to the water fountain and they are recommending that all students come with their own water bottles. So. Yeah, so I think it, I think it looks nice enough for her to take it. It's not, it's not going to cost too much attention to her. She's just going to be able to use it in peace, and so she will be happy, right? So let me show y'all how I got this stuff done. Let's get started. So here's everything that we will be using today. We will be using Cricut Permanent Vinyl. We will also be using Everyday Iron-On Vinyl that can be applied with an iron or the Easy Press 2 or Easy Press 1 as well. We will also be using some infusible ink. This can only be applied with a heat press or Easy Press 2 that reaches up to 400 degrees. And I will show you all how to apply that to the tote bag that we will be using today. We will also be using a sander grit mat to cut our vinyl. We will also use this scraper. And the scraper is going to help us to apply our decals. The brayer is helping to apply the vinyl to the cutting mat and our weeding tool. Today's projects will be created using the Cricut Maker, and we will also use the Cricut Easy Press 2 to apply the infusible ink and iron on vinyl. Before we head into Cricut Design Space, I need to measure my items. So I am going to measure my faux leather journal. I will also measure the tumbler, the pencil pouch, and also that tote bag so that I can make sure that my images are the correct size and that they fit the items appropriately. So we finally made it into Cricut Design Space and we are ready to design our images. And we will be using mostly text-based 
images today. However, I need to set up my template and I've already measured everything. So I know that for my tote bag, I want an 11 by eight. And these are just ways that you can size your templates or images. You can unlock the lock button on the toolbar and then type in your dimensions, or you can do it right there on the square itself, All right? So I have this measured exactly how I want it to be. And so now it's time for me to look up some images in Cricut Access and see what they have in Cricut Access. They have so many images that we can use and it looks like Cricut knows that school is about to start because there's so many school images here. However, I think that I am going to head up to the search bar and type in teacher and see what comes up since this bag will be for me. And there are so many options to choose from. I am not disappointed. And I'm just going to scroll and see which one jumps out at me. Which one do I want to place on my bag? And I found it. I love this made to teach and I'm going to insert this into my canvas. So it looks great. All I need to do is resize it. This is a cut file. I can flatten this and make stickers or anything else that I may want to do. But this is going to be for my infusible ink project with my canvas. And I think I want to personalize it a little bit. That's what I think I like really about the Cricut files, the images. You can change them up. You can personalize this. I can change that color if I were doing vinyl or whatever I was doing. However, I am using the infusible ink, so it's perfect at black. But I'm going to put my name. And so I'm putting Miss Wilson down there. Let me go and change that font. No, I don't like that font. There's so many fonts also that you can choose from as well. You can also put in your filters and see exactly what it is that you like and help. And Cricut will help you find it. So everything is looking good. I need to select my square, my template, and go ahead and delete that or hide it because I don't want that to cut when I get ready to send this to the maker. And I'm just highlighting everything, making sure everything is looking good. There are going to be two cutting mats that I'm using because I'm using two different colors or two different patterns when I press this. You want to also make sure that you always mirror your infusible ink sheets because you are pressing that uh, face down onto your item and so it needs to be mirrored. All right, so we are going to get ready to continue. All right, so now we are able to select the material that we will be using today and today we will be using, for this cut, we will be using infusible ink. And so I'm just going to click browse all materials and then you can type in infusible ink in the search field and it will pull up. All right, so right now it is ready for us to load. We are going to get our mat prepared. Once you put in the material that you'll be using, Cricut Design Space always lets you know the tools that you need. So for this one, we will be using the fine point blade and that will get our project complete. So there are two infusible ink sheets that came in this pack and the ink looks a little bit dull, but once that heat is applied, those colors will pop out at you. And so I'm just gonna take this apart. You want to make sure when you are placing this on your mat that you place this shiny backing, the shiny side is what is going to lay on top of the mat, okay? And so you are going to go ahead and just line that up and apply your infusible ink sheet to the standard grip mat. Go ahead, grab your brayer. Once you have your brayer, you can kind of make sure that it's on there really nicely. You don't want any movement. This You do want to be very careful with the infusible ink and I will be removing this the same way that I remove 
all other vinyl. I'm just going to flip that on the side and kind of give it a nice little pop so that it comes out. And then I'm going to hold down the sheet and just peel the mat away. I have found more success doing it this way than just ripping the vinyl or whatever you're using off. Alright, so here we go. And we are going to put the other sheet in and then I will show you guys how we are going to apply this. Now, once you remove the infusible ink from the cutting mat, you just want to cut out your image. Make sure you don't cut your image, just cut it out so that you can save the rest of that infusible ink. And then you are going to roll it. You want to hear the cracking sounds. Do not be alarmed. Those cracking sounds means that that image or whatever the cut is, is being separated from the rest of the infusible ink. And that's what you want because you want to be able to weed that out. You don't want to use the regular weeders that we love and we usually use. No, you are going to use your best weeders, your hands. Okay, so make sure you use your hands to weed out. Start with the insides of the image and then go around to the outer side and and remove the outer parts of that infusible ink and take your time don't rush because you don't want to mess up your infusible ink but you definitely want to bend and hear a cracking sound on that infusible ink that's when you know that it's ready to be weeded guys to get started you're going to need a few things you're ready to press so i have two pieces of butcher paper because one piece of butcher paper will go inside because the infusible ink can possibly go through the material that you're using and you don't want that you don't want to have it go onto the opposite side or even inside of the bag so we will be placing a piece of butcher paper inside and on top when we get ready just to do a pre-press also, we have some heat tape. That's to help the infusible ink stay nice and firm onto the bag. It is kind of tacky, but we want to make sure that it stays. Finally, we have our lint roller. And the lint roller is important because this gets off any particles or fibers that may be on your bag or shirt if you're doing an infusible shirt. It can be on there and if it is pressed at such a high heat, that could cause some discoloration in certain areas where that fiber is. And so we are just going to give that a nice, nice brush over. And I almost forgot, underneath we have our heating mat. And this is very important. You don't want to press your easy press onto your table or anything else. You wanna make sure that you have a heating mat underneath, okay? A pressing mat, it's almost like a pressing pillow, but that's to absorb the heat. So before I infuse the ink into the bag and place that butcher paper inside, I am going to pre-press the bag for 15 seconds at 385 degrees. And you do wanna make sure you place a butcher, piece of butcher paper in between your bag and your press. 
So I'm done with the pre-press, but I do want to let you all know, you don't have to use butcher paper. You can use cardstock paper or you can use copy paper, but you do want some type of barrier in between that bag and in between the heat press and the bag, okay? So we are going to get ready to place this butcher paper inside of the bag before we press because sometimes that ink can go through and you don't want that ink showing through on the other side of the bag. It won't look right. So you definitely want to place a piece of butcher paper, cardstock, or paper in the middle of the bag. And I'm just making sure that I'm aligning my image correctly. I'm using those straps as my guide of where I'm going to place my image on top. And I'm just going to place it on top. It's kind of tacky. I'm not sure if I even really need the heat tape. You may want to use the heat tape so that you can be sure that your image does not move. However, this is pressing nicely on to my bag, so I'm probably not going to use it today. I'm just going to place this right here and I'm ready to press. Alright, and so now I'm going to put a piece of butcher paper on top and we are going to press it. You can see it should be nice and stuck and we are going to press it for 40 seconds. Alright, let's remove our press and look what we have so lovely guys right that turned out really really nicely all that ink made it to our tote here I'm designing some decals for the tumbler and also the iron-on for the faux leather journal and the pencil case that is actually supposed to be a popsicle case but I'm turning it into a pencil case and I'm just designing these items here. I'm using these hearts from Cricut Access and yeah, just setting it up and I'm going to get ready to send it to the maker to be cut. So I have cut out everything for the rest of the projects and we are just cutting out vinyl and now we are going to weed it and I just wanted to let you guys know I usually weed out the centers of the letters when I'm using letters or if there's any images that have a center that needs to be weeded out I like to weed it out first and then I will go and catch that corner and weed going diagonally um, on the the vinyl and I find a lot of success doing it that way. Alright guys, so now we're able to apply our other decals to our items and I'm just going to give this a nice wipe with an alcohol wipe and let it dry for a little bit before we apply the decal to it. In the meantime, I will be applying the iron on vinyl to our journal. And so it's going to go right here. I just want to make sure it's nice and clean. It is. So this is going to go right here. And so you have to be very careful because this is faux leather and we don't want that heat to melt. So I looked on Cricut.com to find the proper heat times for faux leather when using everyday iron on vinyl. And so I went online on Cricut.com to find out what is it? So I went on Cricut.com to find out the proper heat settings for using everyday iron on and with faux leather. And for faux leather and nylon, which this is nylon, the proper heat time is 280 degrees for 30 seconds. So we are definitely going to be careful. I am going to place a piece of butcher paper on top because I don't want the, the full leather to melt.
Okay, so it's all done and y'all this is looking pretty good. I'm just rubbing it a little bit. Make sure you have on some heat gloves or something and don't just go and touch it like me. But I am just making sure that it's on there and it looks like it is. Let me take it off and y'all this actually worked really well with the faux leather and I'm loving this. I think I'm going to make some of these for my students for their different subjects and possibly even put these on some regular binders or folders, something like this. Now we are going to apply the iron on vinyl to the pencil pouch that we're using and I am doing this at the same heat 280 for 30 seconds that is the recommended time and once I'm done pressing this I realized that I need to press it on the other side so that a little bit of that heat is going back on the side that's where the vinyl or the adhesive is actually located and once I did that everything turned out beautifully it looked amazing and those letters were nice and stuck onto that nylon okay so now i'm getting ready to apply our decal to the tumbler and i'm just scraping our image i'm using a little bit of cricut's transfer tape to apply the decal to the tumbler and I like to scrape the back and the front to make sure that I am able to transfer it on properly and remove it from that backing. And this looks like it fits perfectly. So I'm just going to use my scraper to kind of hold my tumbler in place. You do want something to help you steady whatever it is that you are applying the decal to. And with the decals also, I like to make sure that I peel the backing away from the transfer tape and sometimes that vinyl is not stuck to the transfer tape and so you can just uh, scrape a little bit more to make sure that it is applied nicely and nice and stuck and so now I'm going to get ready to apply it. and I like to kind of curve it so that way it's a little bit easier for me to apply it and there's no bumps or bubbles underneath the vinyl I find that that works a little bit better for me and so I'm just going to let it drop nicely and then I am going to smooth it out. I'm also going to take the scraper and just rub it over there again. This is permanent vinyl, so it is on there to stay. There's no need to seal it. And yeah, you just let it cure. Don't wash it just yet, but you let it cure for a little bit and it will be nice and stuck onto that tumbler. Also, don't forget to save that transfer tape. It's still usable. All right, y'all, so how cute was that stuff? How simple, quick, and easy was it to make all of that? I am definitely loving my little pencil pouch. My students will have no excuse to go up to the pencil sharpener because they will have four pencils in it that they can use and they will be sharpened. Also, I can't wait to tote this bag. If y'all been watching me for a while, y'all know I like this animal print. And so this animal print infusible ink worked great with this infusible ink taupe. And so I can't wait to use that for the upcoming school year. In addition, I think my daughter is going to be super, super happy with both the journal and the water bottle. I think I'm going to make me one of these. I think I want to make my students one also you can do something like this on a folder or a notebook you can use regular vinyl and apply it to your notebooks or folders that's probably what i am going to do for my students to make sure everybody have their things in place and stationary so yeah but that is going to be it for today again thank you so much to the people at Cricut for partnering with me for this video. I appreciate all of you who have watched this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Also, head over to Facebook, like us on Facebook, hit that subscribe button, and go follow us on TikTok. But that's it for today, y'all. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time.